Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to discuss two uh, topics. One concerning the uh, social responsibility and managerial ethics, and the second in the uh, human resource management. Uh, if we uh, look at business companies today, we're going to find that uh, social responsibility and ethics uh, concerns a lot of managers because it, uh, it's very important. For, uh, for managerial practices concerning uh, how they uh, uh, treat, how they manage employees and how they uh, view customers. Uh, also, so many managers and companies are concerned with uh, uh, maintaining the environment, controlling the pollution to the, uh, to the air, the land and water and, and also the uh, society. Uh, managers have a lot of responsibility towards uh, customers, towards the environment, towards the community which they uh, serve and, and make products in order to satisfy. Regarding the social responsibility, there are two uh, competing views uh, regarding the issue of social responsibility and the responsibility of managers towards a, the classical view and the socio-economic view. The classical view it says that uh, simply managers are, are there in order to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be responsible about maximizing profits for, uh, for their uh, stakeholders. Uh, while the socio-economic view uh, holds the beliefs that well actually it goes beyond the concept of, uh, of uh, profit and it, it includes protecting and improving the society's welfare. Most common is the uh, four stage model, uh, a model which shows how social responsibility progresses in organizations. Social responsibility may progress from the stance of obeying all uh, laws and regulations while caring for stockholders, uh, stockholders' interests. Uh, stockholders, after all, they care about, about, uh, about profits. And, and uh, it goes to uh, uh, the point of demonstrating responsibility to society as a whole which characterizes the highest socio-economic commitment. Uh, so uh, so uh, companies progress through the stages of uh, obstructionists, social obligation, social responsibility, and social responsiveness. A number of uh, highly visible ecological problems and environmental disasters, uh, such as uh, that of the Exxon Valdez, oil spill and the mercury positioning in, in Japan. Uh, these incidents and, and so many others uh, brought about a new spirit of envir environmentalism. Recognizing the close link between an organization's decisions and activities and its effect on the natural environment is called the greening of management. Value-based management is an approach to managing in which managers are guided by the organization's shared values in their management practices. Purposes of uh, shared values are they act as uh, guideposts for managerial decisions and actions, and uh, they are uh, shared values which serve to shape employee behavior and to communicate what the organization expects of its members. Shared corporate values can influence an organization's marketing efforts. Shared values are a way to build team spirit in organizations. So shared values are, are, are part of the organizational culture. The concept of uh, ethics uh, reflect the uh, principles, values, and beliefs which uh, distinguish 
between and help people to uh, define what is right and what's wrong. And there are factors which affect employee ethics. Uh, these factors are the stages of moral development, individual characteristics, structural variables, organizational culture, and the intensity of an issue. The uh, stages of uh, moral development uh, are, are mainly three, three, uh, three stages. The pre-conventional stage, which uh, reflect the individual's choice between what's right and what's wrong. And it's based on uh, personal consequences. However, the third one is the conventional uh, stage. And here, uh, moral values reside in maintaining expected standards and living up with the ex expectations of others. The third, called the uh, principled level, that's when uh, individuals uh, make a clear effort to define moral principles apart from that of the, of the group of uh, those responsible about them. However, research on the stages of moral uh, development indicate that people proceed sequentially through the stages and, and uh, there will be no guarantee of the continued development at any stage. And the majority of, of uh, people uh, achieve the highest level of, of uh, uh, moral development and, and hold the, 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 their own ethics. Individual characteristics are also so very important uh, regarding the, uh, the uh, ethics. Uh, characteristics like the values, the ego, strength, uh, the locus of control, uh, they, they all affect the, uh, the uh, ethics which individuals hold. And, and values are, are basic convictions about what is right and, and, and wrong. Values are broad and cover a wide variety of issues. Uh, while the ego strength is a personality measure of the strength of a person's convictions, Individuals who score high on ego strength are likely to resist impulses to act unethically and are likely to uh, do what they think is right. On the locus of control, you know that uh, it reflects the uh, uh, people and the persons uh, believe about uh, whether he has uh, complete control uh, on his uh, actions, or, uh, or whether his actions are, are dependent on, on, uh, on other factors beyond his or her control. The third factor is the structural variables, uh, which reflect the existence of uh, structural variable, uh, variables, uh, such as formal rules and regulations, job descriptions, written codes of ethics, and, and the like. The content and strength of an organizational culture influences ethical behavior. After all, it reflects uh, how, how people behave inside organizations, it help people to give meaning to, uh, to things. An organizational culture most likely to encourage high ethical standards is one that is high in risk tolerance, control, and conflict. The uh, intensity of an issue can also affect ethical decisions, and there are six characteristics which determine issue intensity, uh, like the uh, greatness of harm which may be caused uh, as a consequence for, for decisions, the consensus of uh, rank with others. Uh, a favor of, uh, of committing wrong or not, and the probability of harm, the immediacy of the consequences, proximity to, uh, to the victim, and concentration of, uh, of, uh, of the effect, whether the uh, effect will be, will be intense or not. 
there are many factors which uh, can positively affect ethical behavior. Uh, among, among them, see, see organizations have a chance uh, when they when they uh, search when they uh, select employees. They have a chance to make sure that the employees uh, are. Are uh, uh, holding high standards of, of ethics, and also many organizations develop uh, codes of uh, ethics. And uh, the top management's leadership and commitment to ethical behavior also affect the uh, the uh, nature of ethics the organization uh, holds. And there are other factors which positively. Uh, can uh, improve ethical behavior. There is a simple process through which uh, individuals can uh, judge whether their behavior is ethical, whether their decisions are ethical or not. See, if you gather uh, complete information, relevant information about the issue at hand, and then you analyze the, uh, the uh, facts uh, concerning uh, the uh, the issue through the information you collected, you can evaluate the uh, facts collected based on your uh, and your organization's ethical norms. And the ethical norms include the utility, rights, justice, and caring. And then you can make uh, the ethical the ethical uh, decision you see appropriate. After analyzing the information uh, based on the, uh, the ethical the ethical norms, and social entrepreneurs uh, are, are individuals who uh, seek out opportunities to improve uh, society by uh, practicing, preaching practical, innovative, and sustainable uh, approaches to, uh, to uh, improve the well-being of the society. And the social impact management. In social impact management, managers are increasingly expected to act responsibly in the way they conduct business. Managers using social impact management approach examine the social impact of their decisions and actions. When they consider how their actions in planning, organizing, media, and controlling would work in light of the social context within which business operates, managers become more aware of whether they are leading in a responsible manner or not. Now we move to, the, uh, to some issues in uh, human resource management. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna focus on how human resource management uh, can be a source for uh, competitive uh, advantage. And and before we go on, just uh, just uh, remind yourself that uh, the company's human resources reflect in in large part, in big part, the company's capabilities. After all, the human resources the company has. Uh, hold the uh, the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities. The knowledge and the skills and abilities are so very important when companies compete compete uh, together in the business arena. And and uh, the competitive advantage and comp competitiveness in general refers to a company's ability to maintain and gain market share in its industry. Uh, and it is related to effectiveness, which is determined by whether the company satisfies the needs of stakeholders uh, or not. For companies to gain a competitive advantage, they have to develop a quality of their own, something which nobody else has or can have. And uh, this quality has, has to be, see, there are Four conditions for uh, for whatever the company is uh, is uh, using uh, to be considered as a competitive advantage, and these are the uh, 
uh, that whatever is considered as a competitive advantage, it has to uh, to be long lasting. It has to be unique to uh, to the company, uh, and nobody else uh, should be able to imitate it or develop it in any way or acquire it in any way. And uh, the company must know how to use it and and utilize it. Otherwise, it uh, it, it it will not be a competitive advantage. It has the company has to know how to use. Human resource management can help companies in so many ways uh, in order to gain a competitive advantage. And uh, can it can uh, search and, and recruit qualified uh, personnel and build a very unique uh, uh, kind of, uh, of capitals for the company which help it to uh, have an edge over, over other companies. Uh, it can help the company to, uh, to build uh, human capital, knowledge capital, uh, social capital, and, and very important intellectual capital. And the human resource management in general, it, uh, it reflects, it means the uh, policies, practices, uh, rules, uh, systems, and programs that influence employee behaviors, attitudes, and, and performance. And the effect of the human resource management practices have been shown to relate to company performance and to the uh, uh, company profitability by contributing to employee and customer satisfaction, innovation, productivity, and development of a favorable reputation in the community in which the firm is uh, located. And, and, and very recently, uh, companies uh, became to uh, realize the importance of uh, the contributions of human resource management. After all, in the past, it used to be called personnel management, and that would be a traditional view of uh, human resources. And you may be asking yourselves, uh, what responsibilities and roles do the human resource departments perform? Uh, see, before we go on, the uh, responsibilities and roles of the human resource department uh, depend on the size of the company, of course. Uh, small sized companies are more like teams, so uh, uh, actually there wouldn't be a need for small companies to, uh, to have uh, a separate human resource uh, management department. And the owner uh, of the company, of the small company, or, or the manager of the small company performs uh, all the uh, practices, functions, which a department may, uh, may practice. And the HR function in general play very important roles in management. They uh, play the role of the strategic partner. They decide with the top level management. Uh, the company strategies. They, they, after all, they have knowledge about that, what the company can do and what it cannot do uh, through their knowledge regarding what abilities, what knowledge, what uh, what skills uh, employees possess. And also, the administrative expert uh, role, the change agent expert role and the employee advocate role. And due to uh, the uh, uh, developments in, in technology, information technology in general, uh, thus some new terminologies in, uh, in uh, the practice of uh, human resource management, uh, like the, the self-service, which is uh, considered as one of the consequences of the advanced uh, information technology. Uh, the self-service is the process of giving employees control of the HR transactions uh, re related to, uh, to, to, to them. Each employee would have like an access to his or her own file on the company's database and this allows employees to take greater responsibility for their own careers. Uh, the second concept is the outsourcing which it refers 
to the practice of having another company, an outside company, provide the services or perform some of the basic uh, practices and functions of a human resource department. Nowadays, human resource management faces uh, four very important challenges. Among them is the uh, competition in the new economy, in the globalization, uh, meeting uh, stakeholders' needs, and uh, managing our uh, involvement work systems. Uh, regarding the uh, competition in the new economy, the development of uh, electronic business, uh, which includes any process that business conducts electronically, uh, and it includes uh, buying and, and, and selling and providing uh, services, it has, it, 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 it reflects, it reflects on, uh, on human uh, resources because uh, uh, a company should, uh, should act as if it is a store open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And of course, this puts a lot of strain on the uh, department of, uh, of uh, the human resource human resources in, in any company and there is also the competition for labor uh, after all uh, the important point is that uh, very few companies uh, can easily find people qualified for the kind of work available now uh, the work which uh, depend a lot on, on knowledge on uh, the mastering the applications of uh, information technology. So it is not easy for companies to find qualified employees. That's why uh, there is a competition for, for, for labor. And also there is uh, an increased value placed on, on knowledge, uh, like, like, like uh, the intellectual capital, uh, which, uh, which reflect which reflect how people use knowledge to create value. That's, that's what uh, intellectual uh, uh, capital means. And of course, the human resource management is responsible about, uh, about uh, developing that intellectual capital. Uh, also, uh, since workers became known as knowledge workers, after all they possess uh, knowledge must uh, much more higher than that, which was used to be possessed by, by, by traditional uh, workers. So uh, now, now employees are looking to be empowered and managers empower employees. Uh, and, and, and the human resource management uh, is responsible in a uh, big part in empowering employees after all it is the department which which design jobs, which uh, develop uh, job descriptions and job specifications. So uh, it is more able than than any other department to uh, to do just that. And also there is a demand on uh, skills uh, required uh, skills and the there are there are changes in the employment relationships. Uh, now companies have uh, have different uh, alternative work arrangements like like the independent co companies sometimes instead of uh, relying on permanent employees they they go to uh, independent contractors on call workers temporary workers and and contract uh, uh, company workers there is also uh, uh, demanding work but with more flexibility companies now uh, have people involved in, in, in the work so uh, they find themselves having to uh, add uh, a lot of flexibility to the employees work and of course that uh, is a responsibility for the human resource management it puts a lot of burden on it and uh, there is uh, a very important uh, uh, point which refers to uh, 
the ways that companies are trying to uh, to win the war for talent. It's it's more like a war because uh, qualified employees now are are, are, are very rare to uh, to uh, to find and and to get uh, them to be employed by, by the company, and it becomes like a, a big advantage for the company to get a talented, not only skilled, but talented employee. The second challenge facing the human resource uh, department <coughs> is the uh, global challenge. And if you notice, uh, most markets now uh, for companies became became uh, global markets, and and of course we can uh, we can be sure that in global markets. There are, there are different nationalities involved, and there are different kinds of people involved, and there are differences between uh, people uh, regarding the gender, regarding the uh, ethnic background, a lot, a lot of differences between them. And, and the company itself uh, must deal with the, uh, with the diversity. Uh, so, uh, because customers are not only diverse, but employees also are, are diverse, and companies must uh, adopt the programs in order to uh, to help its uh, own employees its own human resources to uh, to adapt to uh, the differences in cultures between between employees and and not only that but also hrm must uh, develop uh, uh, an hr system for the company which accommodate the differences between employees, after all, companies now are considered more like uh, cos cosmopolitan uh, companies. Uh, also, the uh, the globalization uh, affects affects uh, uh, not only businesses but 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 also uh, companies uh, because of the, of uh, the. Uh, Issues of of the cultural differences between between markets, between uh, employees, between countries, where the company may have branches in in them, and and the global global business also reflects on the company. Uh, if the company has branches uh, in in foreign countries, then it has to train its employees to uh, to be familiar with the foreign. Uh, cultures they're going to be uh, facing when they go on international assignments, and not only them, but them and and their families too. And uh, same training, uh, believe it or not, uh, employees will uh, will need it in order to be ready uh, after they finish their international assignment to get back to uh, the, the the headquarters. Uh, they need to uh, to uh, to be trained in order to be more oriented with their own uh, headquarters culture when they are when they are back because after so many years abroad they they may get adapted they may adopt the uh, the cultures the foreign cultures which they uh, they uh, they uh, interact with in uh, foreign uh, subsidiaries so they need to be uh, uh, trained uh, they need to go through uh, cultural assimilation programs when they are going back to uh, to their own uh, home uh, headquarters the third challenge is the challenge of meeting stakeholders needs and and we t we 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 tackled on that uh, point a lot. We we uh, so many times talked about the uh, different types of stakeholders and how they differ, how their needs uh, differ, and and the human resource management when it designs when it uh, it creates jobs, it needs to create jobs which will uh, uh, serve the needs of the different stakeholders in order to do that uh, companies and human resource uh, departments uh, hold uh, scorecards which which uh, which have the different needs of the different stakeholders and each of them would have uh, a score regarding 
how much did we satisfy of the needs of the stakeholder and we do that in order to have a balance between the scores of the different stakeholders and also companies now must uh, focus on the total quality management and, and how to have employees practice the, the, the jobs perform the jobs without without making uh, mistakes after all total quality management in my conviction it reflects the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, mistakes free uh, performance or the defects free performance uh, also the composition of, of uh, the labor force uh, diversity and so on uh, and, and managing diversity uh, must must uh, must uh, concern the human resource department in addition to the ethical considerations the fourth challenge for the human resource department is the uh, high performance work system challenge and 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 for companies to gain a competitive advantage it must uh, learn how to integrate technology and structure into a high performance work systems and and there are three uh, uh, factors three points uh, which must be considered in uh, doing so uh, among them the change in employees work roles and and skill requirements uh, these roles and skill requirements must 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 be uh, developed and employees must be uh, uh, empowered and they must learn how to work in, in uh, teams and uh, if we have if we develop employees uh, and have them work in, in teams and empower them then of course that will reflect on the structure of, uh, of the company structure of, uh, of work and there will be an increased availability of human resource management databases and e human resource management i mean practicing human resource management electronically and and this will be so very important because employees may uh, may work when they are at home and and we may use uh, electronic human resource management in order to uh, recruit employees in order to train employees there are a lot of practices for e human resource management uh, and that, in addition to the competitiveness uh, in high-performance work systems, uh, that uh, once we are able to develop these type of uh, systems, employees become more uh, skilled and more uh, talented, and and we have to allow them uh, to uh, to express their ideas in the form of innovations and and creativity. Uh, therefore, companies would be more able to compete better in, uh, in, the, uh, in the markets. The practices of human resource management in responding to the four uh, challenges we just uh, described would be uh, grouped into uh, four dimensions, uh, which are uh, managing the human resource environment and acquiring and preparing the right human resources and the assessment and development of human resources in addition to very important compensating human resources these are the four dimensions uh, which describe the practices of uh, human resources in responding to the four uh, challenges and this concludes the lecture of today see you next week i think well, I said a thing because I don't know whether you guys want to uh, to learn about more topics in, in management or not. If so, just uh, just uh, let me know. Send me uh, send me a message on uh, the uh, Facebook uh, uh, page on our page on Facebook or uh, or uh, through any 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 means of uh, social communication.